improving infrastructure and developing an educated and highly skilled workforce. Key components of any plan to grow the economy and drive prosperity. We'll tell you how government is creating the right environment for growth in communities across the island. Hello, I'm Theodore Henry. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Sit back and relax as we take you on a journey of transformation on the Jeep. Also, find out where you can get technical vocational training and skills that prepare you for employment. Then later, how to minimize or prevent flooding during the rainy season. Watch it all unfold right now. A healthy and educated people living in a clean, natural environment, reducing crime, improving the justice system and governance, building a prosperous economy. It's not just a vision, it's reality. Learn about the plan. Join the vision. My country, Jamaica, has a rich heritage and is very unique. If we all pull together, we can make it the place of choice to live, work, raise family, and to do business. For more information on Vision 2030, call the Planning Institute of Jamaica or visit vision2030.gov.jm, your parish library, school library, or the Jamaica Information Service. The Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, JEEP, is a government strategy that has worked. It has put thousands of Jamaicans to work, well over 50,000 people. But besides the obvious benefits of employment, the JEEP has helped to transform whole communities. Learn more in this next feature. The Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, JEEP, is one of government's vehicles for countering chronic unemployment among Jamaicans, particularly those in lower socioeconomic groups. People with special needs, those with low skill levels, and those from underserved communities have been benefiting. The JEEP is rolling and rolling well. And JEEP have a driver. In its journey across the island, JEEP has been making welcoming stops in various communities, where it has set out to mobilize infrastructure development and create jobs. Jeep have done so much project across Jamaica that we all must be proud of. For the three years, Jeep were able to do over 1,000 road projects. If a community didn't have an asphalt road and they were walking into mud, and you have an asphalt road now. I think that the life of the community change. When you put in a road into a community, people want to move back into a community. Where you didn't, where, where you didn't have houses, you are having houses now. Rehabilitative work on community roads, bridges and sidewalks, as well as other public structures are noticeable features of Jeep. As part of making those happen, 50 million US dollars was allocated under the Jeep component of the major infrastructure development program, the MIDP. 20,000 people were targeted for employment and small contractors and residents within the communities found jobs. At the end of the 2014-2015 fiscal year, over 200 projects across the island, which started in Jeep Phase 3, were completed at a cost of $693 million. These employed over 4,000 people. The fourth phase of the Jeep began in October 2014 and 278 projects are being implemented. A combined $1.63 billion has so far been spent in phases 3 and 4, including $140 million spent on small projects done through the parish councils. So far, the figure that we have for short-term employment is about 55000 and, and, and the number is growing. During the last fiscal year ending March 2015, over $250 million was also spent to build houses for needy families. This joint GOJ Food for the Poor Wooden Housing Units project was financed by the Petra Carib Fund. West Rural St. Andrew is one of the areas benefiting under the Jeep, with $105 million spent on repairing roads. Among them, the Boone Hall Road, rehabilitated at a cost of $14.45 million. 
is about 730 meters of road. There was a problem where you have water coming from the hillside and we have to put in some French drain there to also to take away the water into the major drain. The Airy Castle Roadway in Stony Hill is on the list of roads in St. Andrew being repaired in a similar fashion. Sections of the Golden Spring, Mount Airy, Brandon Hill, Mount Zion and Coakley Roadways are also part of the program. This is encouragement, encouraging. Today is a further expression of the government's intent to treat with the infrastructure problems of the country, and in this case with West Rural St. Andrew. The Jeep is also in Clarendon, where a number of community facilities have been benefiting from upgrading works. Among them, the Lionel Town Post Office, Kellett's Skills Training Center, and the Penance Community Center and Post Office. Overall, the three project totaled $23 million at Kellett's, Penance, and here at Lionel Town. These are among 21 projects financed through the Petra Carib Fund to the tune of over $110 million. Over 1,500 1, persons have been employed on the project on the Petra Carib Special Community Facilities Project. Residents of Peckham in Clarendon are happy for the Jeep. Work on their multi-purpose community centre is progressing. It got off the ground last year with an initial funding of about $4.5 million from the Tourism Enhancement Fund. The center will facilitate meetings, skills training, and a bamboo craft cottage industry, among other community projects. There was no road to the center. And when you have function here, and if there's rain, um, there was mud to lead into the community center. And I've taken the decision that we need to have the road right into the center we were to put in a ramp also for those disabled people who have to use a wheelchair. The rural residents are celebrating their rehabilitated roads, some of which are getting asphalt for the first time. Bashi Road in Belfield, central Manchester, which was done at a cost of $3.56 million, and Woodlawn Crescent in Royal Flat are among those which were officially opened in February 2015. We look forward, hopefully, to many more road openings um, as the, the NWA and Jeep um, continue their good work. Other thoroughfares, such as the Old Porus, Old Kendall and Long Hill Roads, are also getting attention under the Jeep. The Gravel Lane and Wishbish Roads in Northwest Clarendon were also improved to the tune of over $13 million. These represented a catalyst for further community development. One of the things that I'm very proud of today, when you travel on this stretch of road to Evely Bottom, the type of development was taking place you would never believe before. People are building and building more. As in many other areas where Jeep is in motion, schools and businesses, particularly farmers and produce vendors in Hazelwood, are satisfied with the ease and comfort in which they can now move about. Most of us could roll back the curtain of now and then and re remember how the world was and what it is today. We don't have to fret about our shoes heel anymore. We don't have to put plastic bag on our shoes, on our feet anymore when there is rain. The Jamaica Emergency Employment Program, Jeep, making a positive difference in the lives of Jamaicans, creating employment, transforming communities. Son, a verb is an action word. Parents need to become more involved in their children's education. Parents are the first and in many cases the most important teachers. Read with your children, review their schoolwork, visit their school. Tapping and rapping and slapping, I said. Nice, high five. Woo. <laughs> A good education will never decay. There's no doubt about it. Technical, vocational education and skills training supports job readiness. And that's why the Caribbean Maritime Institute is pushing this method of teaching and learning as it supports government strategy for human capital development.
At the core of Jamaica's long-term sustainable development goal is the advancement of its people. A big part of that involves giving people the tools to get the education and skills needed to make it in the workforce. The Caribbean Maritime Institute, CMI, is part of that formula. As an important tertiary institution in Jamaica, our role is not just to train people and collect money, but is to make them productive and relevant. The CMI is currently in its third year of a major expansion and transformation. The goal? To educate, train and certify thousands of Jamaicans in areas that are now in demand. People are unemployed because they have the wrong skill set. And they are unemployable because they have the wrong attitude combined with the wrong skill set. We are preparing people with a basket of skills. CMI's expansion and transformation is in line with the Ministry of Education's program to mainstream technical vocational education and training in the general education system. The market space has changed and we have to follow. The CMI is now partnering with select high schools to provide technical vocational training. This will allow more high school leavers to be job ready and better prepared for tertiary training. It's a three-pronged approach to learning. We came up with a pre-college program, which has been highly successful. We tested it first in Kingston High School, which was dubbed one of Jamaica's failing schools. And in fact, at the bottom of the list, these students would come in, some of them to bridge that sixth form gap, some of them to more or less would have been in the process of repeating fifth form. And we take them through what we call the pre-college program, which is bringing the three components together of the discipline, the academic, and the career skills. And it has been highly successful. And we're now replicating this across the country. When we went in, we had a cohort of 130 students. And I can tell you in one year, we saw the transformation. One of the remarkable areas was about 22 of them wanted to go into the marine and professional area to be a seafarer. So one of the requirements was to have two science subjects. 14 of them decided to attempt physics. They have never done physics before. And in nine months, they did the physics and sat the exam. And I think we got about 12 of them passed, including about three of them in grade ones. The method of learning through doing is bridging a critical gap as it effectively links academics and technical skills which are applied to real workplace situations. The pre-college program offers an avenue for high school leavers to matriculate to the core programs at CMI. We are giving them a platform through which they can go into further studies or can enter the workforce. And there's an important third component which is through the apprenticeship model, right, which is now being reintroduced to the National Apprenticeship Board. CMI's expansion includes offering classes from the sixth floor of the Air Jamaica building in downtown Kingston. There is also a joint program at the Sam Sharp Teachers College to prepare educators to teach logistics at the CSEC and CAPE levels. Industrial engineering and logistics training is also being facilitated at Knox Community College. The Caribbean Maritime Institute is on a mission, advancing Jamaica's human capital development. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan, map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk, and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Heavy rainfall increases the risk of flooding, particularly in low-lying areas. But we can reduce and prevent damage by doing a few things, like creating drains to collect and divert runoff water. Let's take a look at some practical examples.
Good rainfall patterns bring joy to our farmers. Excessive downpour resulting in flooding, however, is a major disaster risk. Flat, low-lying areas are mostly affected by this hazard, where rising floodwaters threaten the survival of both crops and livestock. Work is advanced within the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to reduce the risks from such natural disasters. Tactically, floodwaters are being channeled down the drains. The creation of major drains like this one, as well as smaller feeder drains in flat and low-lying areas, forms a major part of the strategic framework for agricultural disaster risk management. It is very important to establish um, drain and flatland. The drain will take away massive amount of water straight to the sea, so we will not face any flood problem. It will minimize flooding problem that we normally accustomed to. Farmers must recognize that flood control measures are important and begin to put these in and maintain them. These artificial drains are necessary if natural drainage is inadequate. Construction should have the following basic components. A field drainage system, that's a network which gathers the excess water from the land by means of field drains, also called laterals. Main drainage system, which is a water conveyance system that collects water from the field drainage system and transports it to an outlet point. And the outlet, which is simply the terminal point of the entire drainage system from where the drainage water is discharged into a river or sea. What rather normally do, when you come on to near to the rainy season, we have a structure program where we go out and encourage farmer to do drainage construction and somewhat under the soil conservation management we have some funds so we, we assist them in the cleaning of drain with an excavator sometimes when the funds is available. And so it is very important and we endorse this activity. When designing your drain, getting the expert advice from one of RADA's extension service officers will put you on the right track. Remember, by reducing vulnerability to flooding through measures like these, farmers could be avoiding enormous damage and recovery costs. And so the Ministry of Agriculture wants farmers to know what preventative measures to take. We should all remember that drainage systems must be kept clean. Shoring up the riverbanks with the use of gabion baskets and removal of excess sedimentation and other debris in waterways also plays an important role in flood prevention. Apart from putting in drains, flooding can be controlled or reduced by preserving forested areas. Forested trees and plants are responsible for holding an enormous amount of rainfall water, averting disastrous floods. Where forested areas are removed, more water runoff flows to low-lying areas and streams and contribute to flooding. Over the years, the agricultural sector has lost billions of dollars due to flood damage. These are losses that can be avoided. Let's take the necessary steps. We have to leave you for now. But remember, disasters do happen. Be prepared. Until next time, take care. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security.
Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkinson with your JIS News of the Week. National Security Minister Peter Bunting this week thanked members of the security forces who ensured safety and security during protest action by some of their colleagues. In a statement Thursday, he praised the work of the Jamaica Defense Force for working with the police to ensure adequate security across the nation over the past few days. Minister Bunting also welcomed news that the Police Federation had returned to the negotiating table. Over the past week, some police officers had called in sick to register their dissatisfaction with the government's wage offer. To enhance the efficiency, quality and cost-effectiveness of the public sector, Prime Minister Portia Simsimila has announced plans to expand the capacity of the Auditor and Contractor General offices. Monitoring of budget-funded public bodies will be strengthened by enforcing the time limit for submission of the relevant public bodies' financial statements to the Audit Auditor General. We are also bolstering the capacity within the Auditor General's office for more in-depth and frequent reviews of these statements. The Office of the Auditor General is to be strengthened and the Office of the Contractor General is being given attention in terms of accepting and responding to its resource needs and mandate. The Prime Minister was speaking on Tuesday at the opening ceremony of the International Conference on Strengthening Legislative Oversight for Fostering Accountability and Sustainable Growth. News also came this week that measures are in place to ensure that telecommunication companies meet the June 22 deadline to implement number portability. With the introduction of number portability, Jamaicans will now be able to move from one service provider to another while still retaining their phone numbers. As a matter of fact, we have appointed a single individual who on a daily basis, and I need a report morning and in the afternoon, um, from now on until the appointed date, to make sure that everything moves smoothly. An extension was granted beyond the initial May 31 deadline to allow telecommunications company Lime to finalize its systems. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries last week announced a $25 million program to rehabilitate agricultural areas destroyed by recent fire. Portfolio Minister Derek Kelly said farmers whose crops were completely damaged will get $30,000 and 900 seedlings to rehabilitate each acre of land. They will also get four 50-kilogram bags of fertilizer, while farmers whose crops were partially damaged will get two 50-kilogram bags of fertilizer. This will enable farmers to resuscitate for summer as a fall. 2015 and spring 2016 and the project will be managed by RADA in collaboration with the Coffee Industry Board and the Jamaica Agricultural Society. The policy of withholding tax on specified services has been postponed until further notice following discussions with various private sector groups. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips and TAJ Commissioner General Inzi Powell, who met with the groups, say further discussions would be held with stakeholders on the impact of the withholding tax, particularly on entities that do not issue withholding tax certificates. Parliament amended the Income Tax Act in 2013, making withholding tax applicable to specified services such as accounting, entertainment and management. Under the new regime, 3% withholding tax is to be applied to invoices. The Transport Minister on Wednesday announced plans to go after motorists who cause road crashes and damage public infrastructure in the process. Let me just indicate that I have received authorization from the Attorney General's chambers. And so when you crash and hit down the, the light pole or the road furniture, this is going now going to be the first charge on your insurance. Dr. Omar Davies was speaking yesterday at the Jamaica Gasoline Retailers Association's launch of National Road Safety Month. With June being observed as Disaster Preparedness Month, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller on Wednesday chaired a meeting of the National Disaster Committee. Stakeholders disclosed their state of readiness as well as measures being pursued to safeguard Jamaicans in the event of a natural disaster. And finally, the Ministry of Health reported that preparations are well advanced to deal with the possible threat of the Zika virus if and when it reaches Jamaica. The Health Ministry said the experience of dealing with the chikungunya virus has allowed for its improved level of preparedness. Since that time, we are not just meeting, but we are now prepared the clinical management. We have prepared the lab, lab response. We have been working on the communication strategy 
we are well on our way in terms of preparation. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson was speaking at the first in a series of training activities to address integrated vector control and the Zika virus specifically. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Adrian Atkinson. This is where we close Jamaica Magazine for today. We're back tomorrow with more useful information. But in the meantime, keep the link. Use our Facebook and Twitter pages, YouTube channel, and the GIS website to stay in touch and get the very latest government information. On behalf of the team here at the GIS, I'm Theodore Henry, thanking you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.